Today, we're at Zashadu. We'll be learning everything we can about bags, not just bags, but bags made here in Nigeria. Unfortunately, I know nothing about bags, which is why we'll be hearing from the horse's mouth directly. I'm Jemima, and this is Fashion Insider. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> okay, so without wasting much of your time, I'm just going to go straight into it. Tell us, who is Zainab? I am the creative director of the brand Mr. Shadu. I'm from Edo State. Edo State I'm from Edo State! State. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I grew up in, uh, in Lagos and in London. Okay. Um, I have always been creative. Okay. Um, and I've had many different outlets for my creativity, but um, being a designer is the one that stuck the, the, longest, the longest and so I've just continued with that. Okay, I know I did a bit of research. So I know that you studied architecture, I know you've also been an actress and now bag making, like how, what inspired your startup? Um, actually, it wasn't, I didn't even think of it as a startup. I didn't, I didn't go into it uh, from a business perspective. It was purely creative. Um, but the more time went along, the more I realized that I had a business head on my shoulders. Um, and it was just fun to see if I could make something grow. Um, the support has been incredible and really I couldn't do it without the support of all the people who recommend us and collect our pieces. Yeah. Um, and that's a really exciting journey to be part of. Not to belittle it, mm -hmm. but a typical Nigerian parent to say, you studied architecture and you want to be making bags. How did your parents react well, to that? actually, I didn't actually study architecture. I fell into architecture through just my kind of love for, for, for lines and for structure and for understanding, understanding how things are constructed. So I started working in architecture. But I actually studied something even more obscure than architecture, which was English and modern drama studies. Yes. Um, and and I had to just convince my, my family that that was what I wanted to study and you know I'm, I'm quite headstrong, I know what I want and it's very difficult to force me to do, to do what I don't want yeah. to do um, and at the same time as well I'm a firm believer in not compromising on your happiness so I just stuck to my gun and um, you know I, 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 I didn't really do it for anyone else, I did it for myself. Yourself. So, yeah. Okay, let's talk about these pieces. I've seen a few here that I might snatch and run out with. <laughs> Each piece is handcrafted. Mm -hmm. How long does it take to make one bag? It takes a long time. It takes a very long time. It could take, this bag could take about 48 hours um, because the way we, the way we produce, um, we are loyal to the traditional way of producing leather pieces. Mm -hmm. Actually, we are the masters of um, leather work. Africans and the people who came and traded with us learned our skills and took them away. Um, and so for us, the artisan is the key, you know, the central figure to the whole process. And we don't run a production line, so the same artist will start a bag and finish the same bag. Oh, um, and so that's okay. why it takes a longer time. And this is the way that, you know, the fashion houses, the big fashion houses that are still artisanal and that have very long waiting lists, this is the way they do some of their very special pieces. Um, and we have that right at our doorstep. But so it's pretty much one bag to one. To one man or to one, one man, woman or okay. to one artisan. Yeah. Whoever is making it. Yes. Okay, so where do you get your materials? And we get our leathers from the north of the country. We work Here with in them. Nigeria? Here in Nigeria. We work with okay. them, a few tanneries that export their leather. So they they create leathers, but they tend to export them because that's where the demand ah, is. Yeah. Um, but I've been on the, on the circuit long enough for them to kind of have pity on me and sell to us. Mm -hmm. Because we don't meet the, the problem is that you, you can't meet their demands and um, their minimum orders. Mm -hmm. You need to order like five five thousand square feet of the same color, yeah. the same sheet. So none of us can meet it. But um, we're lucky enough that we are able to be able to convince them to take a chance on us, and that's how we get our hands on all these beautiful skins. Yes. So you mentioned your mom, your daughter. How do you balance work life and? your life at home? I have a lot of energy, I think, uh, as a person. I've, I've heard that a lot. So I always need to be doing something. I always yeah. need to be moving. I always need to be quite active. In spite of all of that, I just look at it as like juggling balls. You know, you, you juggle the balls. If one falls down, you stop, pick, pick it up, it <laughs> you continue juggling. You know, you just, yeah. I mean, you get very stressed out. Then you stop and you have a time to relax. And then you, you know, kind of just make your goals flexible so that you can 
adapt them as you evolve. Yeah. Um, and then that kind of keeps you sane. Yeah, I agree completely. I mean, it's a very competitive world out there. No matter what you find yourself doing, there's like a gazillion other people doing it. Yeah. What was the reaction when you went to Dublin to sell your product? Did um, they give you the whole, ah, Nigeria, the quality thing? I'm very particular about that because oh, we haven't. Know, you know what's funny, actually? I don't. I think people don't really know that much about us, to be oh, honest. Okay. But for example, we just came back from New York. We were invited to New York Fashion Week. And we went over there, we were sold out. We were sold out in a matter of minutes and okay. it was just a wonderful reception. And these are people who kind of have been following the brand and just wanting to get their hands on a piece. So they were able to see it finally in real life and they were like, oh my God, it's even better than the yeah. photographs. Yeah. So people are ready to write an, a, another story about Nigeria. It depends on what you take out, out there and there. show them. Yeah, definitely. So do you think social media has helped you a lot? in your business? enormously social media has been an enormous help to the brand because it's you know we started in 2010 and it gives you a wonderful platform through which you can express what you're about i think if you're authentic it gives people a chance to really connect with you and vibe with the room and really vibe really. with you it's, it's a very powerful platform yeah. so what future projects do you have in mind what do you think you know is next with zashadi um well we're developing a facility to take roll out kind of our training program because we get a lot of people who want to be trained in leather work. Um, there are lots of marginalized groups that we know we can provide work for. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot to do in the industry to standardize the production. There are lots of brands that are coming up that are making bands. It would be great to have a hub where they can come and produce. Yeah. And we also have a lot of interest from people outside of the country, just like the way that China has grown, where you're looking for where somewhere where you can take your products to be created and the, the price can compete. I think we can offer that to Nigeria. But um, there are a lot of things that need to be put in place. And oh, yeah. so we're kind of at the, the, at the forefront of that in terms of thinking. And we're hoping that we can roll out a few plans next year to expand and to create more jobs really okay so you train your staff yes how long does your training um our training takes about three years it takes about three wow. years to be a fully that's literally an undergraduate course <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly yeah exactly to be fully qualified um as one of our artisans what are the challenges you face with producing in nigeria um, the main challenge of course is power mm -hmm. so you have to kind of schedule yourself you know you but it makes you more efficient in a way so I'm very kind of funny about talking about my challenges because from the challenges are born wonderful ideas and solutions and things that propel us to do what we do. Um, I think there's nothing like challenges for the human spirit to overcome and to, okay. to, to, do, to, do, to do well from. Yes, power is one of them. Staff, getting staff that are trained right, the challenges from, <laughs> of like, I mean, you can order something from the guys up north and they'll just be like, Ah, madam, you know they come oh, the next week, and you just have to wait. What just like that, so you know they come. No, <laughs> you know, no reason. No reason. Just one reason, someone's brother, someone's sister, something, oh something, and goodness. you just have to be like, okay. Whenever it comes, it comes. You know what I mean? And when you have it, then you. So yeah, yeah. there are lots of, lots of challenges. You'll be fine. You're right. I mean, eight years. Yeah. You're doing. You're doing very well. Thank you. Um, on average, how much does it? <laughs> yes. Average. Um, well, our entry level piece for the clutches are mm -hmm. thirty five thousand naira. Okay. Um, and we go up to, I mean, we go up to infinite amounts of money. It depends on what you want. You know, we have a, a few clients who like to create things for themselves. So, ah. I mean, you can spend millions on a bag. Oh, know. so you you do make custom made pieces? Yes. If I tell you this is how I want my bag to look, you can make it to yeah. look like that. And okay. Okay. So, what do you have to say to people who are yet to, you know, embrace this whole buy Nigerian thing? I think oftentimes people are not aware of their own strength and importance in the story of telling a different story. Mm -hmm. Their role, it's pivotal. You as a consumer, without you I can't survive. You're integral to my business. So I think it's if once you understand that power that you have and that role you have in telling the story, telling a new story, I think it can all it can make you decide, okay. I have this power, I want to tell this type of story. Sorry. I'm only going to buy 
things that I really believe in. I'm only going to buy from people who have excellent customer service. Every time I get terrible customer service, I'm going to pull it out. Every time there's something wrong, I'm going to complain. So I think we can train ourselves to be better consumers because it's from you guys that we we have to yeah. meet up. Without know, the buyers, there's nothing to exactly. sell. Exactly. So yeah. I think you need to be aware of your own worth, your own power. Um, and you know, also take your time. I don't think there's any rush. I think it's wonderful to buy Nigerian. But um, you shouldn't buy Nigerian because you're buying Nigerian. Nigerian you should yeah. buy Nigerian because you see something that you love and that you think is good and you want to support. So far, that's what I do. Take your time, find something that you love and use your voice. Tell people what they need to do better. Tell oh, yeah. people why you're offended by something. Tell them because that makes a huge difference. Constructively. Constructively. Not going on Twitter to <laughs> completely destroy somebody's yes, you know, business. Of course, yeah. yeah. But, but understand your power. Sometimes understand. when there's no light on this street, after we moan enough, we call NEPA. And guess what? They come and they fix it. So, you know, if you don't call, they're not going to come. They're not going to come, yeah. You can sit down and complain about them from now to tomorrow, but that was not going to achieve. So I think that's what we need to do as Nigerians. Be proactive and understand our power as a people. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Everything looks absolutely amazing. All right, guys, we've come to the end of today's episode of Passion Insider. I'm Jemima, and don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms at Ndani TV.